They're here for eight months and they're up in the Arctic for four months. Uh, the first bit of land that they see after they, they leave Spitsbergen on the Barents Sea will be Bear Island and that's about halfway between the southern tip of Spitsbergen and the northern tip of Norway. Like something's on the move now. That's definitely geese there now. Oh, lovely. Look at that. Lovely light of dawn sun. The Wild Goose Festival is, is something that I've been personally very passionate about since the, the outset really. I've been working on, with these geese down here for about 30 years. It's been a, a big part of my life really, these, these amazing little black and white geese. Barnacles being a small goose, they don't like to fly very far and land to feed during the day. So we've got these vast salt marshes of the Solway just right out here behind us. So it gives it a great place for them to feed during the day. When the first barnacle geese come in, uh, we hoist the Norwegian flag up on the flag post up at the visitor centre there. Because these are really Norwegian geese and uh, they, they hatch out up in Norwegian Svalbard and they come here for the winter, even though they're here for longer than they are up there, we see them as definitely they're, they're a Norwegian Arctic bird. Today we've been uh, doing the Norwegian trail walk which uh, was started three years ago. It might not seem obvious why Norwegians coming to Dumfries in the Second World War is uh, as part of the Wild Goose Festival, but um, obviously the geese come from Norway as well. During the Second World War, uh, a lot of Norwegians were made refugees and came over to Dumfries. And here they formed a Norwegian brigade to uh, liberate Norway. And uh, like the geese, the Norwegians were not moving here permanently. Um, they were here for a certain amount of time before leaving again. The geese make us think about place. They make us think where we are and where we're connected to. The geese are, are, are a manifestation of the, what's interesting in the natural world around them. We see the geese coming and we see the, see the geese going. We tell seasons by geese. They extend our idea of Dumfries from, from the place where we are to this other place in the north, to Svalbard. So we've got lots of stuff going on as part of the Wild Goose Festival that's connected to Norway. I'm Catherine, I work for the Stove, I'm on the curatorial team here and we're standing in the exhibition for the South of Scotland Norway Network. We thought it was a really good opportunity to showcase some of the current work by local people who are connected to Norway. We've got the work of Stuart McPherson, he did a residency at Calaverock, um, Trana and Svalbard. We've got the work of Simon Lidwell. He goes over to Norway quite often, does craft exchange. We've got the work of Joe Hodges and Robbie Coleman. And they did a residency in Tonsberg with Vestfold Kunstcenter. They did this amazing sort of medieval garden and seed exchange. And they're bringing that workshop to the Wild Goose Festival as well. We had people coming into the Stove Cafe right up until just before lockdown, stitching places of significance into squares, um, mapped, printed maps on fabric. Um, and that started as trying to talk about and highlight places that were connected to Norway, but it then became just places of importance in Dumfries. It would be really nice to continue that in some way. What kind of animals do you think might live in the tree? Monkeys. Monkeys? Oh, not in the UK. Something similar that climbs like a monkey. Squirrel. Squirrel, yeah, very good. 
We've just done a lead walk along the river here with Northwest Dumfries, uh, children from Linklude and Lockside. We just enjoyed looking at wild foods. We looked at berries, we looked at rose hips and brambles. The main reason we're using the river, it's really good migration route for wild geese. And that's understanding the connection of the animals have, but also the human element and the history of the river. I think it's really important to work with children in any context. I think connecting people with nature, particularly kids, is a vital part of the work I do for nature.scot. It's really good for, for mental health, well-being, especially in difficult times we're in now. Get out there, breathe some fresh air, have a walk, see some sights and sounds of nature and just, just relax and just, just be at peace. We're going this way, that way, forwards and backwards over the Irish Sea. I model her up to keep her tough, that's the life for me. And here we go around the ball, we push the ball. I know a big white bird and a bonnet, as you can see. And there shall be no clucking here, at least not by me. Her anime train went over the hill and she blew! Her anime train went over the hill and she blew! The runaway train went over the hill, the last they had she was going slow, she blew! Boo, boo, diddly doo, woo, woo! Let's hear you all chop! As the, as the geese fly over Norway, they can smell the roasted pork being eaten by the locals. The story of travelling and migration really resonates not just with the, the people from Dumfries and Galloway who grew up in Dumfries and Galloway, but also the people who came out from outside to Dumfries and Galloway and called this place their home. Last year we opened the Scotland's National Centre for Children's Literature and Storytelling and we were really excited to be part of the Wild Goose Festival in Dumfries this year. We've got some fantastic events lined up. Uh, we have two author events, um, both giving talks and running workshops, focusing on their book and celebrating nature writing. Then we have an afternoon of storytelling uh, with Susie Sweet Pea Fairy, as well as one of our in-house storytellers, Betrada the Story Mother. Autumn begins as a season for movement and ends with everything changed. From the boggy pools of the Scandinavian tiger forests, west to the far coast of Greenland and east to the Arctic coast of Siberia, geese are breeding. Throughout the far north, birds have been raising young all summer long, making the most of the season of light and food. From the cliffs of Svalbard, where they've been breeding out of the poor reach of polar bears, barnacle geese goslings have jumped before they are capable of flying, landing in the soft embrace of Arctic tundra. The curlew's call became the year-long sound of my childhood. I hear that liquid, loving list and I'm lying in the warm, sheepy grass again, a small boy in two big wellies, hugged by old familiar hills. So I thought the curlews were mine. The connection was a live wire, but then I found that the birds had a place in all of us. My entire family would rush to the kitchen door at night to hear curlews passing between our chimney and the wide, dusty moon. <laughs> the 
this is the water organ and I brought it today up the river Nith as part of the Wild Goose Festival. They also use the river, not in quite the same way, but as a means of navigating to where they stay down at Calabria. It reads the river through a small array of electronic sensors. The water wheel provides the air pressure to activate the organ and the sensors read the depth, temperature, turbidity, there's uh, an electronic compass. And these things are processed into a sound sequence. And that sound sequence relates specifically to what's happening in the water at this minute. So every time it goes out, there's a different thing. And we record them. And something I'm really looking forward to doing, for instance, is taking this to another river where I can play the River Nith to the Findhorn, for instance. And it's a conversation that I can't really take part in, but I can witness. Every September for hundreds of years, Dumfries has celebrated the Rood Fair, this very important day um, and fortnight within show people's um, sort of rhythms, but also within the rhythm of the town. It is a festival that has been celebrated for literally hundreds of years, um, the same time as the geese come and visit Dumfries. So we thought it was a good time to sort of talk about both things. We were really lucky to be joined today by two representatives from the show communities, both of whom have generational connections with Dumfries. So Alec James Calhoun is the current chair of the Scottish section of the Showman's Guild, and Albert Reed is operating rides right now in Queensbury Square, and his family also has connections going back several generations. They've been operating here. The difference is there, but a royal charter is something that is granted to the town to have a particular thing. Now originally these royal charters wouldn't have been granted for just a fair, it would have been a market and a fair. But as generations went on, they kind of then became just for a fair. Dumfries always fell on my birthday on the 28th of September. So I had many good visits to the toy shop that used to be in the Venal, um, just spending the money that I got for my birthday. <laughs> I'm not telling you what age I am now. is greener than the grass. What's more smooth than crystal glass? What is louder than a horn? What is sharper than a thorn? What is brighter than the light? Darker than the darkest night? What is keener than an axe? Softer still than melting wax? And what is rounder? than a ring, and it is now the turn of the crew. To you now, our answers bring. The fisherman's cries full on water deaf ears. She swims in her sealskin far out to the sea. Singing soon, you will swim here with 